Here's a cool trick. Uh, I'm going to show you, I'll teach you, Chris and I are going to do it for you right now. Uh, that's sort of all based on the idea of the sketch artist. Do a little sketch, incorporating that into your uh, sort of ideally unforgettable card trick. Chris, do me a favor here, buddy. Want, this is an intuitive thing. I want you to reach on over and cut the cards. Lift off some of the cards and put them right there. It can be five cards, 15 cards, doesn't matter. You're sure? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to not do anything fancy or suspicious. I'm going to mark exactly where you cut. I'm going to move these off to the side. We'll get back to that in a second. Marked exactly where you cut. Now, I mentioned I was a, a pretty good sketch artist here. I am pretty good. What I have here is I actually have a small piece. Nothing else in there. Nothing weird. Nothing else in there. I have a small piece of uh, sketch paper, actually. Uh, I want you to make a choice. I'm going to have you take the pencil and put your initial on, but you need to decide if you want to do the front or the back. Which one do you want? Front or back of the piece of paper? The front on top. Okay. Why don't you take that? And I'm going to slide this here. Just put your initial one of the corners there. It doesn't matter. Great. Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to actually do a sketch right now. I don't want you seeing it though. Okay. So I'm going to hide it from view. You're going to do a little sketch here. Like this. Like this. I'm going to do a sketch like this. And something like that. Okay. I'm going to get back to that in a second. I'm going to take my sketch now and slip it back inside the envelope. No one gets to see it. We'll leave it right there. Now. Do you have any idea what it is a sketch of, Chris? No. It's actually a sketch. I'm going to tell you that in a second, I'm going to tell you what it is. But first, we're going to come back to here. Right here. Going to lift right to the spot where you cut. Nothing suspicious here. Just like that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. First, you know you could have cut to any card in the pack. This is actually a sketch of your card. I had a prediction, a sense. I sketched the card I want you to see right here. Only one inside here. There it is, a sketch of your card right there, like that. Now, yeah, I know, I, I did sketch it face down. I, I, so you might think, well, it matches all these two as well. But I'm curious, even though this is a perfect prediction, you can see I perfectly nailed. I predicted without any flaw what the card was going to be. I am curious to find out what was your card just by turning it over. Two of diamonds, okay? That's interesting. And of course, that's the prediction there. It only makes sense that if we turn this over as well, hopefully, yeah, my sketch is complete on both sides. I predicted both the back and the face. The world's cheapest magic souvenir. <laughs> Costs you nothing to create these. Uh, this plus a little middle envelope is such a nice giveaway at a performance, okay? It really brings the magic to life. Leave it with people. I'm going to teach you the secret to this. Now, this is based, of course, just on an old gag, basically. But I take the gag and turn it into a pretty uh, mysterious magic moment, so to speak. So I'm going to teach you everything about this and how to get into this and all the subtle points and all that right here on this video today. Uh, I'm also going to announce the winners of last week. So what did we do last week? Last week, last week was for my hoodlum trick. I'm going to announce the 12 winners of Hoodlum. Uh, so hopefully it's you this week. I hope it's you this week. I really do. And finally, I'm going to ask the question of the week in a moment, and you'll have a chance to win my Shine Coin Magic project. That's all happening on today's video right now. I love coin magic. Loved it for years. There's something about borrowing some change from someone and then doing crazy tricks that I think is pure magic. So on my Shine Coin Magic project, I share the secrets to a real range of skills. Number one, it's not just advanced and not just beginner. Range of stuff on there. There's vanishes and appearances and multiplications and passages and all these transpositions, all this stuff on the project. So this is your chance today to win one of 12 free Shine projects, okay? Uh, and the question that you have to answer sort of ties into this whole thing about, hey, can Jay draw? Because I actually am a decent drawer. I do some cartooning and stuff. But the one skill I don't have that I really wish I had was to be able to play music. Huh? As a kid, I did a little piano and some violin, this and that, but I would love to be able to play music. So the question of the week I want to ask you guys is, what's a skill you don't have? You don't have the skill, but boy, you wish you had that skill or that ability. You learned how to do that. Leave a comment. You'll be automatically entered into the Shine contest. And let me know what's a skill you really wish you had that you don't have. There's a bunch of things I really like about this trick and I share all the details with you right now. First thing is you can do it with a shuffled pack because you only have to control one card to the top of the deck for the crisscross force, okay? Uh, oh, and this deck, this deck was invented by the hotshot videographer, my friend, Chris Mayhew. He created this deck, the Leon deck. 
and they're not easy to find, but if you want to score one, you can always find out more about it by reaching out to Chris on Instagram. Now, you can find him at Chris May Hughes. Don't get confused, I did. His last name is Mayhew, which is M-A-Y-H-E-W. But for whatever reason, I think he must have been, I don't know, talked to his dealer. But when he first signed up to Instagram, he went with M-A-Y-H-E-W-S. So that's Chris Mayhew, so you'll find him on Instagram, the Leon Pack. So all you have to do is make sure that the top card is the two of diamonds. Now, notice if someone shuffled the deck and I've already done a bunch of tricks and I have no idea where my two of diamonds is, at some point, all I do is I take the deck, I spread through them until I see the two of diamonds. Say, let me show you something now. We're gonna need a couple of cards here. Let's see, we're gonna use, actually, you know what? Let me show you something even cooler than the card trick I had in mind. And just like that, in full view in front of real people, I just cut the pack and cut the two of diamonds to the top, okay? That's literally the way I do it. I say, oh, you know what, L let me show you something else instead. And so that's how I segue into this trick. Now, this is based on the classic idea of the old magician, uh, it was a gag. It, the idea was, hey, I just predicted your card right here. And then when you per turn over the piece of paper, it would say your card. Or you'd say, you know, I got a picture of your card right here. And then they look at the picture and it's a face down card, just a gag. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool if on one side, you've done a face down card and they've examined this. They can see there's nothing on this or not examined, but they've seen both sides. And then the magic climax is right after the gag of the wah, 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 face down card. You turn it over and the face of the card is actually there now and really magical. And you get this awesome souvenir to give away. It costs you nothing. Now, this is a uh, just a piece of sketch. I got it from an actual sketch pad. So it's not paper. It's actually almost card stock. Okay, it's got a nice texture to it. This is the stuff you normally would draw. And I'm going to secretly prepare this. And the way I'm going to secretly prepare this is by doing a sketch on the back here. Now, I want you to know, though, that the very first thing I'm going to do is say to them, I want to give them the impression they've seen both sides. But let's do the secret prep first. Secret prep. Boom, boom, and boom, and boom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a two of diamonds, a mini two of diamonds on the back. And I want it to be approximately the same size this as what's going to be when I draw the back on the card in a moment. So there's my secret prep. I've got the two diamonds drawn on there like that. This is face down inside here. Got my pencil. I control this to the top. Now, I take this out and I say to the spectator, uh, you guys might know it, but uh, you know I don't just do card tricks. I also actually a pretty good sketch artist. Oh yeah, I'm world famous. I really am a world famous sketch artist. See. Luckily, I brought along a little piece of sketch paper here, like this. But first, I'm gonna have you put your initials and you get to decide, do you wanna be on the front or the back? Which side, on the front or the, pa or the back of the paper? Now, this is a really sweet old ruse. It's an old idea flipping over. It used to be used with business cards. And the key to doing this is you don't overdo it or underdo it. You want to draw enough attention to it so they really register the sense that they saw both sides of the card. But if you do too much of it, people get suspicious, they'll think you're churning butter, or maybe that they're, gonna, they're excited about smelling that sweet jet fuel, they think you're going to fly off in the air or something crazy. So I just take it out, I say I'm going to have you put an initial on it. And the technique is this, I'm leaving it here on my hand, okay? And the idea is I want it to look like I'm turning it over a few times. That's what you want it to look like. But what I actually do is I'm going to use the thumb to the fingers pull as the thumb pushes. And the right, the left hand doesn't move. It's here, there. Pushing over with the thumb, pulling with the fingers. So you just do it a couple of times. I'm going to have you put your initial on here. Do you want to do it on the front or the back? Which one works for you? It doesn't matter. I mean, they're the same, obviously. So which one? They choose one. They put their initial there like that. And I say, great, now I'm going to do a sketch. I don't say to them I'm going to sketch their card. I don't want them getting too far ahead. I'm going to say, do a sketch here. You'll have a limited one-on-one -on -one edition. Now, notice I haven't forced the card yet. But at some point, before you get to this point, you really want to have done the crisscross cut. So let's say, for example, let's back things up a little bit here. We're here, we're here. So I, I introduce, I've controlled this to the top, right? And I say, I want you to cut the cards, lift off some cards. It can, and I always say, not cut the cards, but I want you to lift off some cards. I'm going to have you cut, but then you specify lift off. It can be 10 cards or 40 cards, whatever you want. They lift off some cards. Now I'm going to use the crisscross force. This is an old force where they've lifted off the cards. I pick up these and I use the phrase, I'm going to mark exactly where you cut the cards. Okay, we're going to mark exactly where you cut the cards. We'll get back to those in a second. Nothing fancy or suspicious. 
Now you need a time lapse, because if you would immediately then do this, people would remember maybe it's the top card. But if you get a time lapse, which is why it's the perfect time to bring the focus back here, this comes out, as we said. We do the thing, I say, do you want, you're gonna initial it, do you wanna initial the front or the back, whatever, concealing that, right? They've initialed it, then I take this, and this is a totally natural place for me to hold this. As I say, I'm gonna do initial, this conceals this, right? I'll make sure they can't see that. And now I do a sketch about the same size as the one on the other side, right? And I'm gonna do a, um, I sort of do a rough, notice, so it's a cross hatch. This is, it's a prototypical back of a card, right? Then without flashing this side and without showing the drawing, okay? I take this and I'm gonna slip this whole thing in there and make sure nobody sees either side. And I'm good to go. Boom, that's my sketch. Then I come back to here and I say, we're gonna see, well, you cut to a card. Let's not look at it for a second. Cause now, and now is the best time to really say, because you know what? The sketch I made is a sketch of the card I sensed you were gonna predict. So now the peak, now the tension comes up, the interest, it's like, okay, here's the magic part. And I go, now I think you'd agree you could have cut to any card. They say, yes. Could have cut five cards, 15 cards, right? But I made a sketch of the exact card you cut to. Look at that. I mean, look at that. I think you'd agree they're identical. They're identical. And everyone's at this point chuckling or whatever, going, well, you sketched a face down card. There's no drama in that. And the idea is you present this and as if it's done. Sometimes I'll leave it there and say, okay, let's go on to something else. You want to see a coin trick or maybe I can read someone's mind and they just think there's the gag. Okay, so you really have to make sure you don't second guess this. And as sort of as an aside, I say, which one did you cut to? Ah, the two of diamonds. Oh yeah, the two of diamonds. You can put that away if you want or whatever and you can start putting your stuff away. You could even leave that on the table and wait for them. I mean, what a great thing to leave on the table and go. And then eventually someone's going to turn that out over and show it. Or if they don't, you put this away and you say, now I know, it might, might have been unimpressed with this one. But I want you know, I just, I, I, I sketched this, this is the skill, but it wasn't the magic part. The magic part was I didn't just have the, uh, the back there, but I also have the face. You get this nice little routine. You can do it really quickly or kind of do it in a more involved way, depending on your performance style. I am now gonna announce the names of all 12 of the winners of last week's Hoodlum Contest. Hoodlum is this collection of tricks I came up with all using the cord from your hoodie. So it's rope and string stuff traditionally, but a whole bunch of new stuff, some traditional stuff, all brought together around this idea of just pulling the cord out of your hoodie and doing real magic. So organic. So here are the 12 winners of Hoodlum. If I name your name, you just won one of the 12. Zur Stell, and that's Z-U-R or Z-U-R-S-T-E-L-L. -L. Could be Stelly, Zur Stelly. Uh, second winner, pun intended, great name. Patrice Chambridge or Cambridge, Patrice Cambridge. Crash Bash, pretty casual. Dobster, Dobster, you just won. Okay, like lobster, but with a D, duh. Uh, Josiah Hannah, could be Asaya Hannah or Josiah Hannah, you won. Dark Master, 379, you won. Emerson JR, Courtney Fouroux, F-O-U-R-R-O-U-Z. It might be Eastern European for rules, Courtney for rules. Uh, Lego Man 228, you won, congrats. Jackson Samsel, you won. And finally, Liam Rivera, not Riviera, Rivera. Liam Rivera, you won, you 12 won. Send an email to my team at contact at sankeymatic.com. Let them know, hey, I won the hoodlum thing. Give me my hoodlum. Give first name, last name, and shipping address, and they will take care of you and send it right out in the mail. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know this is the part in the video where I remind you to leave a comment. Go ahead, leave a comment. I don't want you to miss a chance to win one of the 12 Coin Magic products I'm giving away, okay? And the question of the week, in case you forgot, is what's a skill you don't have? Something you wish you could do, but you never have learned how to do? Leave a comment and tell me about that skill. I know on YouTube, you got lots of choices, and I'm sure you could watch this and that, but today you watch this video. So I really thank you. Thank you so much. The, the slowly building this uh, subscriber base has been so excited and really gratifying. I can still remember when I first hit my first thousand and a hundred thousand, and now I'm over 350,000, chugging my way to 400,000 subscribers. It's incredible. So please help out, get on board, subscribe to this channel, click the notifications, okay? 
and magic wise if you're getting serious about your magic and getting into it more and more uh, there is a really i think a pretty cool and heartfelt free resource you, and that's my instagram account uh, i put posters of posters i put photos of gigs and gimmicks and some video clips of this and that and some of my family stuff a real mixed bag on instagram so start following me at the real j sankey okay hopefully i'll see you guys there thank you so much have a great day